Hello out there folks, Brother Craig here. Welcome to The Really Real Deal, uh, November 22nd, 2020, 57 years exactly from November 22nd, 1963. And uh, we're discussing men of corrupt minds. And the deep state uh, men of corrupt minds in 1963 assassinated President John Kennedy. And today, people are assassinating the character, which has been ongoing for five years, okay, against President Trump. Why are they doing this? Okay. Are they doing this because Trump uh, tweets too much, or he's rough, or he's gruff, or he's rude? I mean, after all, we voted for an onion toter who would come and kick the door down. We didn't we didn't vote uh, Trump in because he, he could teach Sunday school. All right. Now, why was Kennedy assassinated? OK, did they assassinate Kennedy because, he, you know, he was a philanderer or, you know, you know how he treated Marilyn Monroe or, you know, all of the other women? No, no. OK. The deep state, Kennedy wanted out of Vietnam, okay? Kennedy did not want to uh, give the deep state the power to have a, a, a military to be exactly what his predecessor, Eisenhower, warned of, okay? Eisenhower, on the way out the door, okay, he warned of... Now, he didn't use the term uh, deep state, but basically Eisenhower warned of the deep state, okay? The government military industrial complex, okay? Military industrial complex, okay? And so let's book in these two presidents, Kennedy and Trump, okay? So Kennedy wants to not get all that started. Trump wants to end it, okay? And so, quick story, real, real quick. I, I don't want to get too much uh, off, off, off point here. Ran into a uh, a veteran uh, at Lowe's. He had his hat on uh, that he was a veteran. I, I, I had my Trump hat on, okay? So walked over, gave him a little fist bump, and I said, "Thank you for your service, sir." And uh, so he proceeded to tell me a little bit about. You know, some things he was going through, uh, Agent Orange, he was a Vietnam era veteran. And and so and I shared with him, I said, well, you know, President Trump has uh, created uh, peace between Israel and three nations in the Middle East, has uh, won the war against ISIS that, uh, you know, when Obama left office, ISIS had a caliphate the size of New Jersey. And Trump decimated them. And he's just decided that we don't need all these foreign wars. And he's bringing the troops home. So, you know, I thank you for your service, sir. And the sacrifice you went through, my prayer is that with President Trump in office and, and, and praying that he would get four more years, that fewer men would have to go through what you went through, unless it was truly, truly a national emergency. And this man said to me, with a scowl, I don't want to hear anything about Trump. I don't believe anything the man says. Okay? So now why do I tell you that story in the midst of sharing with you about President Kennedy who wanted this to not ever get started, and President Trump, who wants to bring it to an end, okay? Well, what you have are magicians, okay? You have, like in the, in the Old Testament, in, in the book of Exodus, when Moses and Aaron went to Pharaoh, okay? And the Lord told Moses to tell, and it's interesting how the Lord would tell Moses, 
tell Aaron so-and-so, okay? Tell Aaron to do this, okay? Because remember, Moses didn't want the job. He said, well, I don't, I don't speak well. I have a, a um, he, he, he stuttered, okay? He had a speech impediment. And the Lord would not accept it as an excuse. He says, well, your brother Aaron, he speaks quite well, but you're my man. I'll tell you what to tell Aaron, and then Aaron can tell him. So send Aaron to tell him, to tell Pharaoh, all right? And it, and it told him to throw your rod down. Your rod would become a serpent. And so Pharaoh called in his magicians, okay, Janus and Jambres. And so they threw down rods is all oh, that's just a trick. That's that's nothing. OK, oh, I have magicians that can do that. And then it says that Moses and Aaron's rods rose up and ate the uh, their, their serpents, ate the serpents of Pharaoh's magicians. And so this so this is what we, we have magicians. OK, we have magicians. The book of Kings, Elijah. Let me read it here. Um, First Kings chapter 18, verse 40. OK. And, you know, actually, I don't have that Bible verse pulled up, but I can tell you uh, what that Bible verse says, that Elijah said, bring them down to the brook. The, uh, the all the prophets of Baal, and it was 400 of them. And there by the water called Kishon, Elijah slew them. He killed them, okay? He took them out. So now today, what would be the equivalent of a brook or a river or flowing water, okay? It would be these flowing electrons like you're receiving right now, seeing this. This is flowing electrons, okay? They flow like a river, okay? This is the information age in which we live. So television, radio, uh, mass electronic communications, it's an electron flow, a flow of electrons, and it's coordinated in a way that produces sound and images uh, in, a, in an exact way from where they're created. This is why, I mean, this is Facebook Live, and so I say it, you get it, probably a, a second or two after I say it, all right? And so this is mass communications, okay? Mass communications. It's just like in the book of uh, Revelations when it was written that, you know, after three days, that you know, there would be that someone would be killed and the whole world would see it. This is a book written 2,000 years ago. OK, in the book of Revelations. So at the time it was written, there was no technological way that people around the world of every tongue, of every nation, uh, that they, they could, that the whole world could see something. But today you can. OK, today you can. And so these are the magicians and they have to be not physically killed. But spiritually, we have to kill them, all right, with truth, with truth, okay, as the coming of the Lord with the spirit of his mouth, okay? And so, in the, and there, there's another Bible verse that even uh, deals with that, a, a chapter, uh, actually. And so, these are the things that we're dealing with when we're dealing with these corrupt men, and you you can book in this. There's a um, there's there's a saying, or it's act not actually a saying. Okay, it's actually quite fascinating looking at going back in time from Kennedy. The similarities between the uh, Kennedy assassination and the Lincoln assassination. All right, and so here now we're going. We're going forward from a, a, a physical assassination of Kennedy to a spiritual assassination of uh, Trump because see they really they don't they don't want to physically assassinate Trump. That would make him a martyr, okay? Just like Kennedy is a martyr, Lincoln is a martyr. 
they don't want another martyr, okay? And so here you have um, this, uh, some of the similarities. As a matter of fact, I have it pulled up here. Let me pull this up, uh, some of the coincidences. And I'm just going to share a few of them. And I encourage you, uh, Google this, pull this up. And, and listen, don't take the first two or three. Go deep in and, 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 and find an article <laughs> because Google is wicked. And Google will give you a watered down version. All right. But I'm just going to read a few of these things. All right. Both Lincoln and Kennedy were concerned with civil rights. OK. Lincoln was elected in 1860. Kennedy in 1960. All right. Now, missing from this one is another one. They were that's they were elected president. Now, they were first elected uh, to Congress uh, in 1846 and 1946. OK, so the, all these different um, they they like to call them coincidences. I, I don't believe in coincidences. OK, both were slain on a Friday. Both were slain in the presence of their wives. Both were shot from behind in the head. Both were succeeded by Southern Democrats named Johnson, who had who had held seats in the United States Senate. Andrew Johnson was born in 1808, Lyndon Johnson in 1908. John Wilkes Booth was born in 1839. Lee Harvey Oswald born in 1939. Okay. Both Booth and Oswald were Southerners favoring unpopular ideas. Now, that would be uh, slavery would be the one unpopular uh, idea and the uh, continuation of, uh, of, of black second-class citizenship would be the other unpopular idea, okay? Um, Lincoln's secretary was named Kennedy, right? who advised him not to go to the theater. Kennedy's secretary, whose name was Lincoln, Evelyn Lincoln, advised him not to make the trip to Dallas, okay? Can all the above be coincidental, okay? And so, and and the, the list is really, really, the, the list is much longer than that, okay? So I highly encourage you to uh, pull that up and, 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 and it, it makes for interesting reading here on the 57th anniversary of the assassination of uh, President Kennedy, okay? And so the evil and the corruption in the minds of men, okay, of course, you know, not a new thing. And we have, I'm going to give you uh, from 2 Timothy, you know, my title came from 2 Timothy, all right? And... This is 2 Timothy chapter 2, all right? And um, I'm sorry, 2 Timothy chapter 3, all right? So we have, let me just read some of it here, okay? In the last days, perilous times shall come. Men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power of God. From such turn away, okay? For of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women. Yes, word of God calls these women silly, okay? Leads captive silly women away, laden with sins, led away with diverse lusts ever learning, but never able to come to the knowledge of truth, okay? And it goes on to talk about Janus and Jambres withstood Moses. Those were the, um, those were the magicians, okay, that uh, tried to uh, prove that 
what Moses had to say was wrong. Okay. And so, uh, you know, and Moses showed them because what he threw down rose up and ate what they threw down. All right. And so we're going to see something very similar to this. And, and the magicians are, are working their magic. All right. You had uh, Donald Trump won a landslide election precisely because, and I said this uh, over a month ago that I thought that the only way Trump would lose is if they were they were to steal it, but that the hearts of the people were with a Trump victory because when I was up in Washington with uh, Rabbi Jonathan Kahn and uh, and, uh, and, 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 and Kevin, I think his name was Jennings, okay? Uh, forgive me if I got his, his last name wrong, but they put a beautiful program together. And at the end of the program, when the ironic blessing was playing, uh, it, it was, and it was not just playing, it was being beautifully sung. I wish I could remember the name of the, uh, the, uh, the singing group that, that they were singing the ironic blessing at the end of the program as everything was closing down. This was about 10 o'clock or a little after 10 o'clock. Uh, at, at the end of the program and the gentlest rain began to fall and because it was a cloudy and overcast the entire day and it was like the Lord just held the rain back and even when Rabbi Khan was speaking if there were rumblings of thunder but no rain just thunder okay no rain okay and uh, and it the rain began right as they were I mean and so gentle you on the jumbotron the big screen there you could see the rain but you couldn't feel the rain okay so i'm like looking i'm just like the, the jumbotron looks like it's raining but there's no rain and so it took it a minute to it fell so gently it took it a while to come down and i said to myself that's the lord's way of letting us know how pleased he is that we, tens of thousands of people, came to Washington to pray for this nation, okay? To ask repentance, okay? To beg pardon. And, and it was done in the spirit of the prophet Nehemiah, who prayed for his personal sin repentance. He prayed for his extended family's sin repentance. And he repaid, prayed for the, the repentance of the sins of his nation. So he prayed on behalf of the nation. And that's what we came there to do. We came there and we prayed and we begged God's pardon, asked for repentance on behalf of the entire nation, you know, including all those who were totally unaware of the event and many totally unaware of the even the need to repent. But there were tens of thousands of people there praying for that repentance and so when the rain just fell so gently like that and i said yeah but that's that's the lord's way of talking to us letting us know that uh all will be well okay but and and rabbi khan he, he's a very wise man and so and he said that the lord whatever happens in the election see he wasn't going to guarantee a win a loss or whatever but he said whatever happens the Lord will use what happens. And this is what we're seeing. The Lord is using this because what has happened is that the election is actually being prolonged rather than a one day event. We're going to have a several month event. Okay. And so this corruption is going to be exposed. Okay. And I ask a question, you see it written there in my description of today's program. I ask a question, okay? Is the treatment of President Trump, okay? Is it comparable to Matthew chapter 10, verse 22, okay? Where Jesus says that ye shall be hated by all men for my name's sake, okay? But he encourages us to, to stand, okay? He encourages us to stand. And he further says that the servant is not greater than the master. They hated me, therefore they will hate you. Now, there are a lot of decaffeinated Christians that uh, like to say, oh, well, 
Trump is a reprobate. He's an ungodly man. How dare you, Brother Craig, uh, compare Trump to Jesus? No, I'm not comparing Trump to Jesus, nor does this verse. Jesus doesn't uh, say that, you know, when you get persecuted, you are on my level. No, he said you would be persecuted for my name's sake. OK, so the persecution, why is it? Are we to believe that all five years of persecution against President Trump is because he tweets too much or he, somehow he's rude? The persecution started the day he came down the escalator. So he had not shown this penchant for tweeting at all hours of the night, okay? Or for, for playing hardball with his opponents, okay? So this wasn't even known and, and it already had started, okay? But what were some of the platforms that uh, President Trump, then candidate Trump, was running on, okay? He wanted to protect the sacredness of human life in the womb, number one, number one, okay? That's a godly principle. That's a godly principle, all right? And so the neoliberal left, of course, they want to enshrine as a, a holy sacrament the right to commit aborticide against any life in the womb that they deem inconvenient, all right? And so what they want to do is unleash all this sexual appetite and say, oh, go and just have all the sexual fun you want. Just, you know, I think the Beatles had a song, something about, you know, folks could just do what do it in the street. I mean, just anywhere, like a dog. All right. Taking the holy and making it profane. All right. And so this is supposedly what happens in not just matrimony but holy matrimony, right? And so on, and I'm going to use the term outside, okay, which I, I do often and, I'm, and I do that purposely. There are two sides. There is our side and there is their side, okay? And, okay, I don't want any decaffeinated Christians to tell me I'm wrong because Jesus himself uh, when he spoke of the two fathers, and I did a uh, I did a Sunday message on this about two months ago, titled "Well, it was three months ago now." Well, no, it was on September 11th. Who's your daddy? Look it up. Uh, go to my YouTube channel, Brother Craig the Hatchet Man, and just type that in. Who's your daddy? All right, because Jesus talked about in the in when he's saying how to pray, he says, "Our Father who art in heaven." But in John 8:44, he's speaking to the religious leadership of that day, he says, ye are of your father, the devil. So he's, Jesus is, 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 is saying that this exists. Our father, your father, us, them. All right. And so this is just reality. All right. And so we, we have to accept reality. We have to be people of truth. All right. And so when we look in, uh, what is it, uh, Second Thessalonians, it, it, that's what it deals with, people of truth. Now, if you don't want to be a person of truth, if you don't want to accept that because it sounds harsh, okay, this is where you're placing yourself, okay? And so, and I would just encourage you to just, you know, be calm and actually read scripture, find out what it says, and then make a decision. Don't just take because I say something that sounds harsh and all, you know, that's unchristian and then just change the dial. All right. And so we're dealing with, uh, and I'm not going to read the whole thing because you who are, you who are long time viewers, uh, you've heard me go through second Thessalonians chapter two, uh, quite a few times. All right. But, uh, this is where we are. We're dealing with truth and falsehood and we're dealing with people who uh, love truth and people who do not love truth, okay? And we're dealing with men who had, literally they have corrupt minds, okay? And so this is how you get the deep state can assassinate presidents, I mean, physically shoot them in the head and how the same deep state uh, here, you know, all these years later can uh, assassinate the character of a president repeatedly for years with the help of the media 
who are like the magicians, okay? The magicians that went against Moses. They're, they're putting a magic trick over on people so that people will not even be aware of truth. But it's my job to bring clarity and to make people aware of truth because when you become aware of truth, at that point, now you can make a decision. Do I love truth or do I love falsehood? Okay, but if you don't get exposed to truth, you're unable to make that decision and you are under what is known as deception. All right. So we want to take that deception away, give you truth. And I'm going to give you this Bible verse to show you what happens to people that don't love truth. Okay. And, you know, I, I look, I don't care about, you know, where my family's uh, voted this way. My family, we believe in this and that, you know, I'm a member of the union. I don't care because the word of God says all that don't believe in truth would be damned. All, as a matter of fact, let me just read it and give it to you in context. All right. So who oppose and exalt himself above all. OK, all that is called God. All. OK. And so there they I mean, life in the womb, they they they're above that. OK, uh, you know, anything that's godly, they, they are against it. All right. Uh, the Bible says, if a man will not work, neither shall he eat. Oh, no, they want to give you an EBT card, okay, which is paid for by the man who does work. It's not paid for by the man who does not work, okay? And so, just, and I could just go all the way down this list of the, the theft, the murder, uh, you know, all of this stuff, you know, thou shalt not Thou shalt not murder is a, one of the Ten Commandments. Thou shalt not steal is one of the Ten Commandments. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor is one of the Ten Commandments. And so in all this character assassination against Donald Trump that's been going on for five years, you know, certainly this is this is false witness. OK, and we see now all this truth about this stolen election coming out and you see, you know, the, 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 the usual suspects and even now Fox News and we're finding out that there are all these um, Republicans that allegedly were with Trump. Uh, you know, they have uh, financial connections to uh, the Dominion system that perpetrated uh, this this big fraud where it was built into their machines. All this is coming out. And again, I'm dealing in truth. OK. And I know I'm mixing politics and religion, but you can't help but mix politics and religion. The Bible is the most political book that's ever been written. OK, everything that's in politics is contained in the Bible. OK, I mean, I mean everything. So now let me get back to uh, to 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 reading here uh, just a little bit of chapter two of, of the book of Second Thessalonians. All right. Now. then the wicked one shall be revealed, okay? In many translations, it says the lawless one, okay? And so and we've seen all summer long lawlessness, all right? And, and let me expound on lawlessness uh, just for a minute before I finish Second Thessalonians chapter 2. When there is no law and order, you deny people correction. The Lord does not deny us correction. So why would we who are man is God's vicegerent on earth, his representative, okay? And in specifically men of God, all right? And no one put a gun to anyone's head and said, you're going to be the man of God and you, you got to be the one to, to preach the truth. No, you know, we all do this of our own volition, of our own free will. And so there's a high requirement on us when we do so. All right. And there's a special punishment for those who stand more so than the guy that just, that doesn't, you know, claim to be righteousness, the, the, the representative of, of, of the righteousness of God. All right. Is for, for those that make that claim like I do, the, 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 the bar is much higher. OK, so we have the lawlessness on several levels. And I'm just going to choose two to show you the correlation of what you've witnessed in this year, 2020. OK, 
one, the low level lawlessness, okay? So a guy takes a can of spray paint and he spray paints a statue. Nothing happens, okay? Because people in leadership, preachers and politicians, right, in these Democrat controlled areas have said to the police, don't bother them. They are what they call peaceful protesters. So the guy spray paints and he gets away with it. There's no correction, okay? Throws a brick through a window. There's no correction. Takes a rope, puts it around a statue, private property worth some of them hundreds of thousands of dollars, okay? No correction. The police won't intercede, okay? And so it get, because there's no correction, again, I'm dealing with lawlessness, okay? The, it says the man of lawlessness will be revealed, all right? And so, we're, I mean, what do Christians think this means? The man, I, what, what do they think this means, okay? So, you have... The crimes get worse and worse and worse because of the lawlessness and people know that they can get away with it, all right? And so the next thing you know, businesses are being burned down. Many people lose their livelihood. Folks can't go to work. You already have the, uh, the, the, uh, the China virus has been hyped up. I mean, Sweden has proven that you cannot shut your economy down and, and you, you'll be just fine. Sweden, the entire nation of Sweden has proven this. In the United States of America, the state of South Dakota has proven this, okay? And so this lawlessness, it just, one thing builds on another. Now, that's the low-level um, example, the, 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 the physical example of cities on fire all summer long. Now, the election, this is the high level, okay? All my adult life that I've been uh, politically active in my home state of Virginia, and in Virginia, by the way, they do use the Dominion voting system, but Fairfax County always sends their vote tally in last, always. And I cannot tell you the number of times we've been watching the election returns come in and our guy is ahead only to get eclipsed when the Northern Virginia vote total comes in, okay? Coincidence? And people might say, oh, well, Brother Craig, they are a very large jurisdiction. It takes them longer to count. No, it does not, because the larger jurisdiction has more precincts and more precinct captains and more workers, more counters, okay? The little small county with uh, 3,000 people might only have one or two precincts, okay? The big populous locality that has 400,000 people, why, they're gonna have 50 precincts. And so, it, no, it does not take all night. They wait to find out how many votes do they need to make sure that they win. Nothing has been done about it, and this has happened in many, many states for many, many years, okay? And nothing is ever done about it, nothing, okay? I've witnessed um, the uh, Senate election of uh, Coleman up in Minnesota. He was defeated by a comedian, okay? A, a very bad comedian. And he was ahead on election night, and then all of a sudden they found a bunch of votes in the, literally, I'm not exaggerating, I'm not making this up, you can, Research this yourself, literally in the trunk of someone's car. And yet and still, Republicans did not contest it. They allowed it to, they allowed the Democrats to get away with it, all right? Similar things happened in the California congressional races uh, of, of, of a couple of years ago and in the uh, Senate race in Arizona, okay? Well, you have a crazy woman who defeats a fighter pilot in Arizona, okay? In Arizona, 
right? And they call it vote harvesting, where McSally was ahead on election night, and then all these fraudulent votes come in, and then she loses, and there's no challenge. So again, lawlessness, all right? This, what was done in all these cases over all these years was literally against the law. And so when you don't enforce the law, all right, what happens is lawbreakers figure out, oh, well, they're not going to do anything. So I'll get bolder. So and it's just like on the example of the guy, first the spray paint, then the brick, then the statue, then burn the building down, okay? Assassinate a, a police officer or many police officers, okay? So you go from spray paint to murder in five steps. And so we go on the uh, electoral example. And, and this is, and look, and don't tell me, uh, Brother Craig, this has, this has nothing to do with uh, Christian faith. No, it has a lot to do with Christian faith. And I'll tell you why. In ancient Israel, when the king did evil, the entire nation of Israel was punished. And they did not have the right to vote for their king. We have that right. So if the Lord would punish a nation for what the king did and nobody voted for the king, what is he going to do to a nation when you vote for, which would be a sin of commission, or you allow the stolen vote of, which would be a sin of omission. Either way, it's a sin. If Joe Biden gets in there, it's a sin. It's a national sin, okay? It's a national sin. Had he won a legitimate vote, it would have been a sin of commission on on the majority of this nation. That didn't happen. The majority, the vast, vast majority voted Trump, okay? And it wasn't just Trump. It was Trump's policies are closer to godly policies. And so the majority of this nation literally wants godliness, okay? They may not realize it, but that is what they want, okay? They don't want murder in the womb. They don't, they don't want to steal from Peter to, and give to Paul while the stealer and giver scoops 70% off the top, okay? They, they, don't, they don't want this, okay? They don't want this, all right? And so these are men who are corrupt. They are corrupt minds. They're reprobate. And the evil has been going on for so long. And the Lord says, I'm going to do a great thing. Now, I know in the Bible it says in Israel, but it, we're in America now. So you can read that as, I'm going to do a great thing in the United States of America that will make both ears tingle of all who hear about it, right? And so both ears, uh, and I did a whole um, talk on this a couple of weeks ago, both ears represents the not only the natural and the spiritual, but the political and the, and, and the spiritual, okay? That's both ears, okay? So politics, godliness, they, they, they work together. They work together, okay? And this is not rocket science. But anyway, so we have all this um, this 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 uh, this vote theft, vote switching, this this evil that goes on, which again is a sin of commission perpetrated by a minority of people in this country. But if it is allowed to stand, it will become a sin of omission allowed to happen by a majority of the country, right? And so this is why we cannot, we absolutely cannot allow this because this will usher in God's judgment, okay? Because you you think about it, here you have President Trump, the most pro-life president ever, okay? A very fair-minded man who was falsely accused of, I mean, of, of, of being a racist. I mean, of all things, and here you have the actual racist Joe Biden who once said he did not want his children to go to school in a racial jungle, a man who literally stood on the Senate floor and attempted to obstruct 
the integration of the public school system in the United States of America. And you have Donald J. Trump who purchased a segregated country club called Mar-a-Lago. And I've been to Mar-a-Lago. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. But Donald Trump opens it up to anyone who can afford the price of entry. Okay? Anyone who can afford the price of entry. Male, female, black, white, Jewish, it does not matter. I don't know what the entry fee is, but whatever, you know, 50,000, 60,000, 30,000, I don't know. But whatever the fee is, okay, Donald Trump is concerned with the color green, not how much brown you have on your skin or lack thereof. He He's not concerned with that. He's never been concerned with that, okay? And to call this man a racist when, you know, you can go back into his history and see photographic evidence of him be having the accolades of the black community, being given awards by uh, black organizations for his uh, philanthropy and the things he's done for the black community his entire life. Then he gets to be president of the United States and his policies create an economic engine that uh, cuts the uh, unemployment rate for blacks and all, of, you know, all different groups literally all groups, the unemployment just, it, it plummets. It plummets and opportunity soars, okay? And it's just like what Ronald Reagan said, a rising tide lifts everybody's boat, okay? Everybody's boat. And so anyway, um, we're going to keep it kind of short today, but you know that, that's just some of the things uh, on my heart uh, today as I, as I share with you. And well, let me finish this. Um, I, I was I was reading this 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 chapter in Second uh, Thessalonians, and I kind of have this habit. I, I I go off on a tangent sometimes, so you you guys you guys forgive me. All right. So anyway, so then shall okay i was talking about the wicked one which is sometimes interpreted as the lawless one so i, I went off to explain lawlessness and why lawlessness is so dangerous okay uh you know because some people need control some people lack self-control and if you don't have a a law on them they'll just get worse and worse and worse and and, and this is because they feel like they can get away with it so you know, you see that with your children, okay? Some parents are permissive, some parents are strict, okay? So, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders, with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish. And there's a reason here, because they receive not the love of truth that they might be saved. So this is why I said this deal, this whole thing is truth and falsehood and what do you love? Do you love truth or do you love falsehood? Okay? Because if you do not love truth, keep listening here, Mom. I'm going to get to it in a second here. And for this cause, okay? And the cause here is they receive not the love of truth. And for this cause, God didn't say Satan will send them. God will send them a strong delusion that they should do what? Believe a lie. Now that might seem harsh. Oh, Brother Craig, but I can just hear the atheist now. Yeah, I knew it. Your God is tricking people. No. God is just giving people what they what their natural inclination is. They're gonna do it anyway. All right? They're gonna do it anyway. So those that don't do not love truth, God's gonna send them a strong delusion so that they could believe a lie. Why would God do that? Verse 12 tells you that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness, okay? And so that 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 is uh, it right there in, in, in a nutshell, uh, people. Uh, that is it, okay? And so we want to bear these things in mind and we want to get into reading our Bibles in such a way as to ask ourselves, how does this apply to my life today? 
my extended family's life today, in my countries, my society in which I live? How does this apply to today? Okay. And so I would just ask you, uh, it's, it's fine to go into your prayer closet. Um, you know, I have nothing. I think it's fine uh, to have the word of God in the pews, in the pulpit, and in the prayer closet. That's fine. That has its place. Okay. But we also want the word of God in the public square. We also want the word of God in applicable, a, an applicable word of God, a practical word of God. Okay. And I think there's nothing wrong with that either. I don't think we have to be one or the other. We don't, everything doesn't have to be politics, but certainly we cannot chase politics out of our churches. All right. Because when we took God out of marriage, we see what happened. Okay. You took God out of schools, no more prayer in schools. We saw what happened. Okay. And now, and you know, in, in many, many, many churches, they want God out of politics. And then they, you know, all oh, see, you see, that's why I don't want to get in politics. Well, Reverend Chickenfoot, you took God out of politics in your church. How many other churches did the same? We are instructed to be salt and light. We are instructed. It's not a suggestion. We are instructed. Instructed. Commanded would be a more pr appropriate word. We are told to be salt and light. Salt preserves, light illuminates the darkness so that others may see. And so why would we want to not preserve godliness in the same society where we and all our church members have to live? Our family, our children, our grandchildren have to grow up and live in this society. And we don't want to preserve godliness in such a society. We want to just give that over to the devil and we want to stay in our safe space, our little, our little church, our little safe space where people come once a week, maybe twice a week if you consider, or uh, two or three times a week if you consider uh, a one-hour Bible study here and there, and the rest of your time is spent out there in the world, the world that is, is too dirty for you. It's just ridiculous. It's ridiculous. What's the washing of feet about? I can tell you what the washing of feet about is about, okay? Because it said that the rest of you is clean. You see, you don't wash the feet of a dirty person. If the rest of you is clean, that's a man or a woman of God. And the feet need to be washed because they are traveling to places that need them. And so in that traveling, your feet get dirty. And so we want to bear this in mind before we critique the blending of faith and culture and politics, okay? Because all this all comes under God's dominion, all of it. So anyway, we're going to cut it short today. I really thank you all for being there. We want to pray for our nation. We want to pray for our president and first family. Uh, we want to pray for all of the, you know, I pray for you. I really appreciate you all uh, being there Yeah, every week, uh, hundreds and sometimes uh, over a thousand people uh, view these messages. I really appreciate that. Okay. I would ask you all to please share this message. I would ask you to visit our website, the really real deal.com, the really real deal. Dot com. And I would just ask that the Lord would bless you and keep you, that the Lord would make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you, and that the Lord would lift his countenance up upon you and give you peace. Each and every one of you out there, folks, the peace that surpasses all understanding. God bless you. Uh, thank you again for being here. And uh, don't forget to share this message. And please, when you go to our website, sign up for our newsletter. God bless you folks. And we're going to see you uh, next week. Uh, actually, we're going to see you uh, probably 
uh, Wednesday or Thursday with a with a special Thanksgiving message. God bless you.